Hello there, it's Lee back down here in the lab. And if you've seen my other videos, you'll know I like using these things here called software defined radios. And I've had a few people ask me what, a, what an SDR is and how they can get into using them, what they should buy and how you get started. So this video is here to introduce you to software defined radios and help you get your first software defined radio up and running because they are really good fun. It's easy to get started and importantly for me, it's super cheap to begin. But you know, it's nearly Christmas and we all need some cheering up. So if you subscribe and comment down below, uh, or if you're already subscribed, just leave a comment, then I'll put all your names into a virtual electronic hat and I'll pick one or two out who will win one of these software defined radios, which you'll have with you before Christmas. So subscribe, comment down below, and I'll pick at least one, maybe two out of the hat, and you'll get some SDRs, so you too can try this at home. But we can't all be lucky winners, so if you don't win one of these SDRs, then look down below in the description and I'll show you the best places to buy some of these so you too can start doing this on your own machines back at home. But let's start at the beginning. What is a software defined radio? What does it do? Well, a software defined radio does for radio communications what a computer sound card does for sound. Back when I had my first PC, it was a 386, I didn't have a sound card and the only noise my PC made was beeps and farting noises. When I did a sound card, I could record sound, play back sound, I could make my own music using virtual musical instruments, and I could hear all the music and sound effects on the games I didn't play. But before all of this digital music, if you wanted a guitar, you'd have to get a guitar. If you wanted a drum set, you need to get yourself a drum set. If you want a grand piano sound, you need to get a grand piano. But all you need to do now is have a PC, a sound card if you haven't got one built in, and software such as this here, and you have at your fingertips the instruments of an entire orchestra. And you haven't even got to go out. To record, you'd need to have a tape recorder. And if you wanted to have any kind of sound effects, such as reverberation, that's echoes, or you want to change the tone of a sound, you need to get yourself an equipment rack like this here, full of all the kind of sound effects and equipment you'd need to get the noise and the sound you'd want. Recording studios used to be big expensive places, full of all sorts of equipment, and the big mixing desks with all the faders on, all you need now is a sound card and your PC. These sound cards and all the software you can use, this is software defined sound. What you see here is a USB sound card. On one side you have a USB plug that goes into your computer. On the other side here you have the audio connectors and with this, this device converts the digital information here into the analog here to make your sound come out and when it receives sound from a microphone perhaps then the sound goes in here is digitized and goes into your computer in the digital realm on your PC you can do anything you like with the sound before you send it back out again to listen to this here is a software defined radio on one side you have a USB connector on the other side you have the radio equivalent of a microphone an antenna with this little SDR USB dongle, you can listen to radio stations, you can listen to CB radio, you can decode pages, you can see the waveforms on the screen, and you can even record the radio signal to your hard drive, just like you can record audio with a microphone and a sound card. And I don't just mean record the sound that you see from a radio station, you record the actual radio signal that you receive with the software defined radio and then later you can modify it you can analyze it and if you have an SDR transmitter you can even play it back there are lots of different kinds of software defined radios that you can buy uh, the one that if you subscribe and comment below you can win is this one here 
The next step up from these is this, the RTL SDR. These are functionally pretty much the same. This is just a, a slightly higher quality receiver inside here. Uh, it's in a metal case and it lasts a bit longer and it's a little bit more accurate. But that's the real difference. For this video, we'll be using this one here, which is a really easy way and cheap way to get started in software-defined radios. The next step up would be something like this here. This is a Lime SDR. The biggest difference between the Lime SDR and these ones here are that this one can transmit and it has a wider frequency range from about 1 megahertz to 3.8 gigahertz, whereas these two here cover about 1 megahertz to 1.8 gigahertz. So this one basically transmits and you can transmit and receive on more frequencies. Apart from that, they're pretty much identical. So we're going to be using this software-defined radio here. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll plug it into the computer and let's see what we can do. Okay, so here we are. I've plugged the SDR into the PC and the software we're using is, this one here is called SDR Console. The software is mostly free. Some of them you have to pay for, but all the ones I use are completely free of charge. They are also mostly open source. So if you can do it, then you can download the source code and modify it to do anything you want it to do. What we have here is the SDR console and I've tuned it to 100 megahertz here. But you see, there's nothing being received because we've forgotten something really important. And the important thing we've forgotten is the antenna. Now I'm down here in a basement so I can't use uh, the antenna that is supplied with the radio, this one here, because in the basement it, it just isn't going to receive anything at all. But I have an antenna that I put outside of the basement and we're going to plug that in now and see what we can receive. Our software defined radio is plugged in. We've connected the antenna to it and we can see a radio station here. This is on 100.6 megahertz. So let's see what we can hear. So there are, I think this is, uh, I think it's classic FM or some similar station in the UK. Uh, but this is a software-defined radio, so we can really easily split switch between different radio stations. And there we are, I think that's Radio 1. Uh, but again, we're, we're software-defined now, we're not limited to one station at a time like it would be with this old radio here. We can listen to two radio stations simultaneously, just by turning both on. So there we are, so now listening to two stations at once. Let's turn them all off a bit. So there, so that is the, the quick intro to software defined radios listening to a single radio station. But what else can we do with a software defined radio? But remember of course that our software defined radio is computed and done entirely inside the computer. So if we want to change frequency, all we do is click on it like that, and we can listen to what it's saying. It's about looking there after you. So if something happens, we pay out on 99% of these two are actually claims. the same radio We're station just on different frequencies. Track. There's nothing there, just noise. Maybe. There we are. And you can see the different signal strength of these stations by looking at the amplitude, that's the height of these signals on the graph here. So these are all pretty strong. Uh, you can see occasionally these spike up and do some fairly interesting things. That's because this is broadcast FM. And broadcast FM is more than just the sound. For a start you've got stereo sound signals on broadcast FM and you also have this thing called radio data service that transmits data to your radio receiver and that's how your receiver can know what station it's listening to, whether there's news or traffic reports on, and sometimes what music is playing at the moment. But we can see a lot more as well. So broadcast FM is actually quite a complex transmission. You see here you have mono left plus right signal, you have a pilot signal so you can see what you're tuning into, although that's only for uh, automatic receivers to tune it up and down and to lock on to a signal. You have the stereo channels here. Uh, this here is where the radio data service is. 
uh, where you get that data and you have other bits here that are on that transmission. But with software defined radios you can see the entire thing. So you can see there's a quite a big peak here where the pilot signal is to enable those radios to automatically tune into that station. So how about receiving things like walkie talkies? Well yes of course we can do that as well. All we need to do is tune our SDR to the right frequency, in this case it's 462.125 megahertz and let's see if it works. Hello, hello, hello. There we are, so we're now receiving myself on a walkie talkie with the software defined radio. And if you have one of the SDRs that will transmit as well, you effectively have your own walkie talkie in your computer that you can use. You can even, as I said before, record that very signal and play it back as well. How about this thing here? This is a, a, a remote control car, remote control thing. Uh, on the back it says it's on, can you see that, 27.145 megahertz. So I've tuned our software defined radio to 27.145 megahertz and let's see if we can see what it does. Uh, so if I go forwards, there we are, there's a signal there. Uh, go backwards, we get a signal. And left and right, we can see those signals. Uh, but because we have a software defined radio, we can zoom into that and see what the difference is between forwards, backwards, left and right. Let's do that now. Okay, so we zoomed right into the signal now at 27.145 megahertz uh, for our little remote control car thing image here. So if I go forward, let's see what we can see. So that is a, a going forward signal. Now what we can see on the screen here is this is what's called a, a waterfall chart. And the frequency is this way and time is up here. So you can see what happens at different frequencies across that whole spectrum here. Which is really interesting for trying to work out uh, what stuff is doing. Uh, so that's a, a right signal, that's a left signal. So you can see there's not much difference we can see here. Typically what these remote controls do is they'll send a series of pulses and depending on the the direction you're going, forwards, backwards, left and right, the width of the pulses uh, is going to change. That's called pulse width modulation. And then the receiver picks that up and interprets those into forwards, backwards, left and right signals. But it isn't quite so clear on here, so we can't quite pick that up. Uh, what we could do is we could actually record this signal and use some different analyzers and pick that up in a slightly different way. But for now, you can see that we can receive a car remote control. Of course, what we could do if we have a SDR transmitter is we could receive these signals, record them, and then playing back later, which could be quite interesting. So that noise you can hear now, you can just about hear some music in the background. Um, it's a very weak signal. This is a foreign radio station on HF. Uh, it's a bad signal because my aerial outside only really works for VHF and UHF, that sort of 50 megahertz up to about 900 megahertz is uh, what I can really receive here. But that shows you that you can actually receive all the HF radio stations and then on a HF between about 1 and 28 megahertz is loads and loads of really interesting stuff. I wanted to try and find some Morse code for you down here so you can hear and see the SDR picking up and the computer decoding that Morse code but I haven't got much here just because my antenna is so rubbish at these frequencies. But on HF there's loads of really interesting stuff. Uh, aside from all the strange foreign radio stations and propaganda stations you have down on HF, you can receive shipping communications from ships in the sea, uh, comms from aircraft flying over the Atlantic Ocean for example, and you can even receive the famous number stations which are very powerful broadcast stations that just transmit people reading out lists of numbers. And the theory is that these are actually encoded messages being sent to foreign spies all around the world, which is really strange and interesting stuff. But on the internet, you can download lots and lots of different frequencies that you can go and listen to. But that's not all. 
you can do some other really amazing stuff using these software defined radios. Even using the little one here, which I will send to you if you subscribe and comment down below and I'll pick your name out of the electronic hat, you'll receive one of these and an antenna in the post to you ready for Christmas. With these kinds of things, you can also receive images directly from weather satellites. That makes flat earthers really, really upset. But have a look at some of these images here that have been received by people using these from weather satellites. You can also receive signals from the International Space Station. They actually have some amateur radio on board. You can receive that with one of these software defined radios and they'll send out voice communications and even pictures and what's called slow scan TV, which is basically uh, color facts. And you can see these pictures like this here from the International Space Station yourself using your own software defined radio. If you really want to get into it and you're into things like astronomy with a suitable antenna system, you can even pick up space probes and do your own radio astronomy with a homemade radio telescope. And here are some of the kind of pictures you can get. Obviously, these aren't pictures taken with a, a camera on the end of it. These are pictures that you get by sweeping your radio telescope across the sky and then you use some computer software to get these pictures. But these are actually pictures of our galaxy that people have received and made just using these little software defined radios. A cheap device you can either win or get on the internet from eBay or Amazon and a few bits of software and an antenna and you can re receive, tune into and decode almost anything at all. You can even, with one of these little things here, listen in to people's 2G phone conversations. That of course is highly illegal, but you can do it if that's what you want to do. And if you just have a look for things like IMSI captures uh, on Google, you'll find out how to make these using these little devices here. In the next video on this short series on software defined radios, we're gonna look at how you can use one of these more advanced radios here to transmit rather than just receive. And we'll also look a little bit about what kind of antennas you need to use your software defined radio. But since we're doing transmitters, we can find out how you can have your own radio station, your own TV station, and even how you can prank your neighbors by using their little remote control doorbell. In a later video, we're gonna delve down into some of the more technical aspects such as, well, how do these work anyway? What is it that's inside these and what do they actually send to your computer that lets you do all that clever radio stuff on your PC? But remember, to win one of these, subscribe and comment down below and in one week's time, I'll pick your name out of a virtual hat and get one of these on its way to you. In the meantime, have fun exploring SDRs and Keep safe.